Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. This is where I love to bring you realistic, quick and easy dinner recipes that your family is gonna love. Tonight, I'm sharing two brand new crock pot recipes that I have never shown on my channel before. And they're what I call next level crock pot recipes. They have a very little bit of preparation, just some chopping or maybe browning something, but they are so delicious. They are worth the effort. So just sit back, relax, grab your sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Today we're gonna make a garlic parm chicken and potato crock pot meal. And I'm using about a pound of boneless skinless chicken breast that I have cubed into pieces. It's almost thawed out. I'm also tossing in about a pound of some baby red potatoes, not even chopping them because they are tiny using a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese right out of the green can, a nice little spoonful of garlic. I'm putting in a generous half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm gonna throw in a little pepper and salt to taste. And we're gonna do about a half a tablespoon of some olive oil. I'm just gonna mix this up just a little bit. And this looks like a small amount, and it is a small amount. I'm actually halving the recipe that I'll have linked for you here below. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more oil. I'm ready for a good meal tonight. I don't want fast food, and I don't have time to cook. It's just gonna be me and Patrick here. So I'm gonna use a crock pot. Never think that you can't use a crock pot just because you have two people. I can never emphasize this enough. Customize recipes to what you need for your size family. I'm not worried about there not being any liquid in here because like I said, my chicken, it's still just a tiny bit frozen. So we'll have a little liquid cooking out. You can see I'm getting a little bit of a late start. It's 11:11, but I'm gonna pop that lid on there. I'm gonna crank this baby up to high and I bet we'll have chicken by three or four o'clock this evening. It has been a little over an hour and my chicken is thawed out now. So I am gonna kick this over to low just so nothing burns in here. It's been about three or four hours later and this is completely done. I'm just gonna take a nice little handful of some shredded Parmesan cheese and put it over the top. I'm gonna stick the lid back on there and let that get all melted down. While that is going on, I have taken a bag of steamable broccoli and I did go ahead and steam it in the microwave just so it could go ahead and be done because I like to roast it up and get it pretty good and crunchy in the oven. I just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it and get it all coated. Then I'll hit it with a little of my anti no nos which is salt, onion powder, and garlic powder, and go about 20 minutes on 420 degrees. And it is perfect. And now the cheese has had time to melt on our dish in the crock pot. It is beautiful. I love my broccoli. A little bit crispy like this. Super good. The color on this chicken. It's so good. It's come right out of the crock pot like that. But look at all the flavor. Delicious. And our little potatoes. Perfect. Soft and fluffy on the inside. Mmm. So delicious. This is such an easy, little, impressive dinner. This makes a great date night supper. It's as good as anything that you would go out and get in a restaurant. And it was so quick and so easy. Even though it's a crock pot meal, it really just doesn't take long at all if you cook it in high and you cut your pieces up small. Before we get into the second crock pot recipe, I just want to share a little Friday night, date night dinner that me and Patrick had at home. At this point in our lives, by the time the end of the week rolls around, we're just ready to spend a quiet Friday evening at home, grill something ourselves and enjoy the evening. So let me show you these delicious steaks and how we prepared them. 
We are going to cook up our beef filet mignons from our Good Chop order. We're going to do these in a reverse sear method, starting in a cast iron skillet inside. I have my oven heated to 275 degrees. We're going to cook them in here till they're about 125 internally. Then we're going to put them outside on the black stone. Very little seasoning on these. We're just wanting the real flavor of the meat to come through. Patrick had some beef Wagyu that he had melted down. He's putting a little bit of that in there, some garlic, and then he is going to douse them with some butter. And look at these. So quick, so easy, and so delicious. Tender and juicy. The flavor was spot on. You going to show us the bite? Let's go. And we didn't put a whole lot of seasoning on these because we really wanted to like taste the meat and they're so juicy and tender. Even my like well done one. Mm. This tenderloin is so very tender, so good. Dad, what are we doing next Friday night? Ribeyes? Ribeyes. Ribeyes next Friday night. Now let me show you where you can find some of these delicious steaks and more. I just recently found Good Chop and we are loving them. And I'd like to thank them for sponsoring today's video. You can order fully customizable boxes with your favorite beef, chicken, seafood, and pork products from Good Chop online. You can choose from over 50 high quality cuts and then they're delivered right to your door. The selection and quality is so far above what I've been able to find in my stores locally. And Good Chop prides itself on sourcing beef that comes with no antibiotics or added hormones ever. Only the good stuff, never any artificial ingredients. And what I love most, besides the great flavor, is that Good Chop sources its meat and its seafood right here from American Farms and Fisheries. When you order your meats from Good Chop, you support local family farms, independent ranchers right here in the United States. And of course, they stand behind every product with a 100% money back guarantee. You love Good Chop or you get your money back. And today they have a very generous offer for my viewers. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code MAMAMALE120 or click the link in the caption below to receive $120 off your first four boxes. Let Good Chop make your Friday night date or any weeknight dinner extra special and delicious. That's goodchop.com slash YouTube and use the code MAMAMALE120 or click the link in the caption below and get $120 off your first four boxes. Tonight we're making a crock pot taco pie. It's made with canned biscuits. It's basically like a bubble up bake, but in a crock pot. Starting with a pound of ground beef, and I'm gonna add in some green bell peppers and some frozen diced onions. I've not been to the store this week, so I did not have any fresh bell peppers or onions, but if you know me, I like to keep these bagged frozen recipe starters like this in my freezer for such a time as this. Also, if you just have some that are about to go bad, you can chop them up and freeze your own. I do that too. I'm gonna prep my biscuits. You're welcome just to tear these, but I just think it's easier and quicker to cut them. And if you have seen me make bubble up bakes before, I did a whole video with canned biscuit recipes and it had like six bubble up bakes on it. But if you haven't seen that, I will link it below for you. But you will know most of them say to cut them into your biscuits into like four or six pieces, but I prefer to cut mine into smaller eighths. Also, the recipe that I have typed out for you below is from a channel called When With Jen. She hasn't posted in a long time, but I will link her channel below. I always love to watch her. She had a lot of simple crock pot recipes. And in this recipe, she said an eight ounce can of biscuits. I don't think that's what she meant. That's not what she showed in her video. I think she meant eight biscuits. But anyhow, this was her grandmother's recipe that she always used to make with her. 
doesn't have to be perfect little cuts either. Now I've got my meat, my onions, and my green peppers all cooked thoroughly and softened. When you throw in those frozen ones, you gotta give it a minute and let it kinda, you know, get back up to temperature. But I'm gonna dab out any excess grease with the paper towel. There's not a whole lot. This was pretty uh, lean ground beef. Now we're gonna throw us in a spoonful of garlic cause you can't do it without garlic. I'm gonna put in a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, Gonna put in a packet of taco seasoning. If you have it in the bulk can, just throw you in a little, you know, two or three tablespoons full. Gonna put in six ounces of tomato paste, and I'm gonna try this trick. Somebody told me to um, open both ends of your tomato paste and just push it through. Okay, I don't think that was any easier than scraping it out with a knife or a spoon like I do normally. You never know till you try though. Now we're going to pour in three-fourths of a cup of water. And we're going to get everything incorporated and let it simmer here just a minute. Now if you had pre-prepped some frozen ground beef and had it in your freezer, you can cook this right from frozen. You could just throw it in your crock pot and throw all these other ingredients on top of it, mix it together in your crock pot, and go from there. But since I had to cook my ground beef, I just thought I would incorporate everything together in my skillet. You can see how nice and simmery it is. I'm gonna cut it off. Now let's move over to our crock pot and assemble it. I've got my crock pot sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray, and that's all the assembly required right there. <laughs> I should have dug out my smaller crock pot, but we're getting started late, so this big one hopefully will cook it quicker. I'm just going to spread it all around the bottom there. Now I'm just taking my little pieces of biscuit dough and putting them all over the top of this. You could definitely do this as a bubble up bake in the oven. I think we normally cook them about 375 degrees. Just watch it close. And usually about 25 minutes seems like I'd have to go back and look. It's been a while since I made one. Normally when I make these in a casserole dish in the oven, I will pull out two biscuits so it's not too doughy. But you know what? I'm just putting them all on here tonight. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. There you can see what it looks like. And you can see I'm starting really late. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. But I'm going to put the lid on it and I'm going to cook mine on high. And I would just about bet this will be done in about three hours, which would be fine for us. We've kind of been lazing around this Saturday. We've all had a little bit of a cold and not been eating a whole lot anyway. So high, good to go. We'll check it in about three hours. It is 7.49 and I turned this down to low probably 10 or 15 minutes ago. I told you I thought it would be done. Sure enough, I come over here and poked on my little biscuits and they look great and they've kind of got really brown. I guess, ooh, that one might have got a little bit too brown on that side. My crock pot gets a little hot. But anyhow, I don't know if it's because the stuff, like, coming up underneath it made it brown. I don't know, but it smells delicious. It looks delicious. Now, I'm going to take a nice handful of Kobe Jack cheese. Put it over the top. A little bit more of a handful, too. And I think I'm just going to keep it on low. Put that lid on there and let it melt. I've got it completely turned off now. Told you it wasn't gonna take it, but just a minute. Scoop me some of this out, and you guys don't be like me. Cook yours on low, like the instructions say. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't look too bad, except right here around the edges. It just got a little bit done, but you know what? We're gonna eat that too. It won't hurt a thing. 
and whatever kind of toppings you like on a taco, that's what you do here. I didn't have any little tomatoes. I could put some salsa on here, but I don't think I want salsa. But I did have just a little bit of lettuce. And of course, I'm gonna put a big old dollop of sour cream right here. So let me get a little bite from underneath here. Mmm, that is good. Friends, this one is absolutely delicious. As soon as I started eating on it, I wished I had put black beans and corn in it. I started to, but I didn't because Maddie didn't want them. But this is great. This makes a lot. It's perfect for a big family dinner. So flavorful. Do be sure and cook it on low because I'm afraid your biscuits will get burnt around the edges like mine did. I can't say enough good things about this one. If you enjoyed these recipes, I'd love it if you would give it a big thumbs up for me. And happy Mother's Day to all the ladies out there who are mothers by birth or mothers of the heart. You all make the world go round. Don't forget to check the description box for all the information on Good Chop. And I put that canned biscuit recipe up here on the screen for you if you haven't seen it. Until next week, I send you love from my kitchen.